Well, good afternoon, YouTube. It's a beautiful Friday. Just got home from work and I raced inside to grab the cameras. I don't have much battery life on the cameras today. I will be making a relatively short video. Sun is setting, I did so it's getting close to, well, it's just after six, 6.10 or so. Sun is set, get setting quicker and quicker. I want to make sure I got out and did this video today. Wave to this guy here. So on my way to work this morning on my commute out to Madison, I noticed that I rolled over 36,000 miles on the motorcycle today. Quite an achievement for me. I, this is the first motorcycle that I've put that many miles on. And I thought, hey, maybe I should talk about this bike and its history of the bike and, and when I got it and, and the life cycle of it or the life of its bike. And the other reason, the other really cool reason that I really should talk about this bike is that this is most likely the last vlog that I will be doing from this motorcycle. I have conversations going with Wisconsin Harley Davidson for a new motorcycle and everything's looking good and we should be picking it up tomorrow. I really want to get out and do one last vlog out on the motorcycle here. Of course, with the new motorcycle, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do, how to place the camera. Where do I put it? I have no idea. Gonna to have to figure it all out. But I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, this is a 2012 FL HTK. It's an Electric Glide Ultra Limited. I always get that stuff messed up. It's basically an electric glide that has all the bells and whistles. So one of the cool things it has is the heated handlebars. I use that all the time. Especially in the colder weather. It's fall now. So I actually don't have them on. I turned them on earlier on the ride home. Cruise control. It's got, it's got everything except for maybe heated seats is maybe the only thing it doesn't really have. And I really like it. It's It's been an awesome companion. And I have to say, as far as quality goes, this is my second Harley-Davidson I've ever owned. I owned a 2001 Heritage Softail. And there's two problems I had with the Softails when I initially owned it. Like, when they uncrated the bike and before it was even delivered, the, the um, gas tank there was no thread or no working thread on the gas tank and they had to give me a new gas tank. But that's when they uncrated it before it was even delivered. So technically, I'm not even going to count that. It's just something I happen to know because I was watching them uncrate the bike. The second issue I had with the bike is, is um, the battery. I had a battery go on me. That was six months after I purchased the bike. I had a battery go on me and replaced the battery and that was the last battery that I put in the bike until I just before I sold it. And that battery lasted nearly 11 years. So really that was all I had for issues for that, that Heritage Softail. It was a well running bike. Again, I, over that 11 years that I had it, I only put 18,000 on it. And here we have my Heritage, or uh, excuse me, Ultra Limited and I have 36,000 in five and a half years. We purchased it in 2012. It's a funny, I think, a funny story. When I had, back when I had my heritage at the time, I was really wanting, my back was starting to hurt because I'm getting old and overweight. Back was starting to hurt, so I wanted to get to one of these full dresser, full bagger bikes for comfort reasons. And there's no way my wife was gonna go for a brand new Harley Davidson um, one of the ultra, you know, the big baggers. So I started looking on Craigslist and week over week I was reaching out to people, finding out how much it would take for their existing bike. I was looking at used ones and talked to my wife, trying to work it out. And came across a couple that I was really interested in. But they had high miles on them, which you start to wonder about that. 
Anyways, so I had I I even got to the point where I had a for sale sign on my on my heritage soft tail and I put it out in the front yard to see if anybody would be interested in it. And that was maybe just the day I did that. I took the for sale sign off and kind of relegated myself to the idea that I probably would not get a new bike, a new motorcycle. So anyways, my wife and I were out shopping and when we were going out to the stores and stuff that Saturday, I actually don't remember what day it was. I assume it's Saturday because we were out and about. I told her, well, I want to stop at the Harley dealership. I need to get some oil. I need to do an oil change on the bike. So basically the oil, the filter, and the O-ring. So we go out there and I'm heading towards the back service area. And as you go to the service area, you pass by all the bikes. And there is this very pretty black limited there. My wife looks at it, she stops and she looks at it. She looks at the price tag and she turns to me and she says, I don't know, do you think you'd be happy with this one? This simple black one? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I can, I can deal with that. Oh, okay. So I headed back a little bit more and she says, well, well before you buy your oil, Maybe we should, let, let's talk about this. Lo and behold, that day, I brought home a new motorcycle. Literally, no intention of going in to buy a motorcycle, yet we come home with one. And that was, that was awesome. And this motorcycle has treated me so well. Like I said, I took this down to Carbondale for the Eclipse. You know, that was a multi-day ride and Lots of traffic, lots of traffic. Holy cow. Hold on. Traffic was the worst I've ever seen in my life. And this thing just held up like a champ. It purred like a kitten, ran ran flawlessly. So there's really one problem I've had with this bike over the five and a half years that I've owned it. And that was the voltage regulator. About two years ago, I my bike had a hard time starting and I thought that was really weird and it's, it wouldn't happen all the time it's just this occasional wouldn't start or it would start but it was just really funky and then I started noticing that the amp meter over here the voltage sorry voltage meter over here was reading like down at 10 volts or lower and right away I thought well this is this is really weird, so let's replace the battery. Took it into the dealership. It wasn't under warranty. I had to pay for They put it on a tester, by the way, and they said that the battery failed. So, okay, that was it. So I put it, so I purchased a new battery, and I got it back, and the next day I, I'm riding it to work, and the same kind of thing happens. It just, I stop for gas, and it's really dim, and it just won't, the electronics just don't even work right. It was really weird. And turns out that at that time, and maybe you guys, if you're familiar with Harley Davidson's, there was a recall on the voltage regulator for certain model motorcycles, well, this model specifically. However, when we looked up the serial number, the recall didn't address this serial number. It was outside of it, but the voltage regulator did die. And um, at that time, there was such a demand for the voltage regulators because they were being replaced that the dealership didn't have any. And they said they called around and nobody had one. And I was, I was getting borderline pissed off. And I, I, I understand supply and demand and all that, but I was pretty ticked that my bike wasn't under the warranty and it, or under the recall, and it clearly was, was an issue. And I, I talked to the service guy, and I said, "Well, I don't care. Do you have any one of the, like even the Chrome ones? Just." I, I need, I'm not going to sit here for three three weeks, so that's what they were telling me. Two to three weeks without a motorcycle. Two to three weeks in the middle of summer without a motorcycle? I mean, we're in Wisconsin here, we're not in California. The riding season's short enough as it is. So I asked him, do you, do you have a Chrome? It's like, yeah, I, I think we might. It's like, well, can you check? And sure enough, they, oh yeah, we got quite a few of those. It's like, I, it's, well, it's more expensive. It's like, I really don't care. Just put it on, please. So they put that on, and the bike has been great ever since. It's been rock solid. So 
So that was the only issue I had with this bike. Other than that, it's been great. I've put quite a few miles on in the beginning and then I kind of took a rest and I really didn't do a whole lot with the bike. Kind of stayed off it a little bit. And then I basically got back into it, I'd say 2015. So 12 to 13, 13 and a half, I was on the bike quite a bit. You know, it's brand new, where the newness wears off kind of a thing and then you don't ride it as much. And then I got, um, in 2015, I really wanted to do some stuff to my bike. And in the 2015 and 16 times, basically I, I bought this muffler, Vance and Hines um, Monster Ovals. And I purchased, so I put that on and I rode that, I think, for the rest of 2015. And that really invigorated me. I thought the bike just performed, just had a little bit more power, sounded a lot better and just motivated me to ride a little bit more. And in 2016, early 2016, right away, I went out and purchased the Stage 1 kit, which is based nothing more than just a stripped-down air cleaner. And then the Screaming Eagle Super Tuner, the alleged Eagle Legal Screaming Eagle Super Tuner. And those three together really opened up this bike. And this bike, to me, it sounds like a little race car. has probably more power than I can, I shouldn't say power, I should say torque. It does quite well. And then from there, I, you know, along the way I got these, I call them stickers, the little chrome editions, like the, the chrome stuff for the speakers and the front fascia here, little chrome accent pieces. Bought a bunch of those, and of course you get some for Christmas from the family. Trim pieces and stuff like that, so you kind of make it your own over over time. And eventually the bike is way, the way it is. It's a great bike. When I purchased the bike, I got the what I, I what I consider the minimums that I have to have, being an old fart that I am, is I got a backrest. To me, that's an essential. I need the backrest. So this becomes a lazy boy on the interstate. And then I got highway pegs. So you can put your feet up a little bit. Some might say it's unsafe, but I don't know. I've got 36,000 miles that say it works just fine for me. Anyways, I thought I'd just share the bike a little bit, a little bit of history of my bike. I've taken it all, you know, three, I, my wife and I have taken it on uh, some mini trips. We did a three-state, uh, back when we first bought it, 2012 or 13, we did a three-state trip, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, and that was a lot of fun. And we've taken a few other trips, not quite as involved as that, but there were a lot of, all those have been fun. And of course I started my vlog with this motorcycle. And it's, I haven't looked back ever since. It's been a great time. So anyways, thank you for riding with me today. My last, most likely my last ride on this motorcycle. And the next time you see me, I should be riding a new one. And I'm going to leave all the details for a future video. So. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. And we'll see you in the next one.